So in this video, I'm going to run through the steps involved in going from having an existing ground profile drawn to putting on a, some design criteria for the vertical alignment of a road. In the previous video, we went from a contour map to creating a surface to adding an alignment and extracting a longitudinal section from that. So the next step here now is to uh, start drawing on some design criteria for the vertical alignment. To do that, what you need to do is to select the profile itself by clicking on any part of the grid and you get a contextual ribbon appearing at the top of your screen. And the one we're looking for here is the profile generation tools. So if you click on that, we have uh, various options here for the alignment name, which is number one. It's just this one alignment in there and VP for the vertical profile and it will be vertical profile number one. You can give it a description, you can use different labeling styles, and you can also set design criteria for the K values and things like that. I'm going to accept the defaults and see how it looks. So click on OK. You now get a toolbar appearing like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a curved road, vertical road alignment based on two tangents meeting. So I'm just going to go in here and have a look at the curve settings for a second to see what we've got. And we've got a parabolic curve, which is fine, and K value of 50, and various different lengths for the crest and for the, for the sag curve. Uh, again, the defaults are going to be OK for this, but if you need to make any changes, you can. So for example, if I change that uh, K value up to, we'll say, 100, and change the K value here to 100, it's going to give us a slightly different curve, but that's OK. OK, next, come back up to this part of the toolbar again and draw tangent with curves is the option we're looking for here. So click on that and you can see on your command line it's saying specify the start point. So I'm just going to put on a, an alignment here for part of this road and I'm going to start it. I can start it anywhere really. I'm just going to click on here to start it and I'm going to say that I'm going uphill as far as there and then I'm going to go downhill as far as here and I can go all the way to the end. And when you've drawn on the alignment that you're happy with, just press enter and the alignment gets fixed in place like that. So you can see here the curves have uh, been automatically labeled. I'm going to get rid of that toolbar for a second. The curves have been automatically labeled. The curve for the tangent lines has been put in. The chainage for the highest point has been identified. And if you look down here on the bottom of your uh, table bar, you can see that the only thing that's missing is the vertical alignment geometry. We need to put a bar in there for that on the labels. So we can have a look at that in a second. Now, before we get to that, if you see any reason to make any changes to any of these uh, alignments, you can do so. So if I go in here for a second and click on the dashed line for the alignment, I get these little uh, drag bars here and if I click on that triangle there I can actually raise that section I'm going to zoom out here you can see you can see it in context I'm going to raise that section and I can also move it anywhere that I want so if I click on there the alignment gets regenerated so those are all editable at a later stage so I just want to do one last thing here which is just to show you how to get some data onto this table down here so put the uh, mouse over the table itself and do a left click to select it then come up to your profile view properties button have a click on that and you can see the different bands that are in there at the moment we've got the uh, changes we've got the existing ground levels and you've got the geometry of the horizontal alignment we need to add in uh, a band for the vertical geometry so from this drop down list here select vertical geometry uh, the type of band, the style of it, um, I'm going to go with standard and we'll see how that looks. You can always change it later on. And now that you've created it, you need to add it and it gets added to the bottom of the table. So when you've done that, click on apply and click on OK. And you should find now you've got a fourth band at the bottom showing various different uh, design criteria for the vertical alignment. I'm going to make a couple of changes to this. I'm not happy with the way it looks, so I'm just going to select on it come back up to profile view properties and what we're going to do is instead of a gap of 12.5 millimeters um, the reason for that gap 
is we accepted the default and it's actually putting a gap in here. You can see where I've got my mouse. I'm going to change that to zero. And if I go OK to that, the alignment gets snapped up onto the bottom of the table. But I still want to make one or two more changes and you can have a play around with how you want these to look. So I'm going to change the appearance style of the band and I'm going to pick vertical alignment geometry and go OK and go OK here and it just updates itself slightly to um, slightly more useful appearance. We've got it in line here now with the other labels which looks neat. Uh, what we have is we've got the uh, gradients and levels for the alignment as we go along there like that and I'm just going to make one more change to it to make it one more level of presentability. So what I'm going to do in this step is I'm going to reassign this information here to the vertical alignment itself. Right now that information there is actually working off the existing ground level which is why you can see quite a lot of uh, information being presented here. So click on your table again, come up to the profile view properties and for the vertical geometry the style we want to use here is going to be vertical alignment geometry details, that's okay. But over here, the profile we want to use is going to be not the EGL profile, but the vertical profile number one. So if we click on that and come down to OK, this is going to update itself now and it's much cleaner looking. And what you're getting in this part of the table now, I'm just going to hit escape a couple of times. Uh, if we go over here to where the curve is, what you're finding here now is you get a chainage and a level for the tangent point P. You get details of the radius of the curve, the K value that's been assigned, and the total length of the vertical curve. And then you get also a level and chainage for tangent point uh, R. So that has just updated the way that that information has been presented. So that's taking an existing ground level profile, which is the green line you can see there, and adding on some vertical alignment details. Now, having changed the way that this information is being presented, you can also still make some changes to the geometry. So let's just say we want to move this tangent point here, or sorry, this intersection point here. I'm just going to go up and select on the vertical alignment, the design alignment, so clicking on it here. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit because I want to focus in on being able to see the information that's down here on the table as well. If I move my intersection point across, the table at the bottom updates and it moves across with it. So it's all interactive um, information that will update itself in real time as you make changes to it.